Hey, what's good? It's your boy Afterbeer Gaming here, and today we're going to be looking at a $1,500 gaming PC build for the month of February. So before we get started, I would just like to say that this build will not include things like the operating system, the mon the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse, because those things you can get by yourself based off of your personal preferences. I would also like to mention that PC parts fluctuate in price constantly. So depending on when you watch this video, your price could be changed. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting off this build, I have the CPU and for the CPU, I chose the Intel Core i7-4790K. At the time of this recording, it only costs around $333. And even though there are newer and slightly better processors out like the Skylate 6700K, the i7 is still a really good choice for gaming, rendering, streaming, and video editing. It has 4 cores clocked at 4.0 GHz, but it can be overclocked to around 4.4 GHz. It also has hyperthreading, which basically virtually doubles the amount of threads, so instead of 4 threads, you'll have 8 threads. And this is a pretty solid CPU, and it's going to last you for a while, but keep in mind, it doesn't support DDR4, which means when DDR4 becomes the norm in like 10 years or so, you'll have to change your processor, so yeah. So the next logical part to talk about would be your mom. <laughs> I'm so funny, JK. That was not really funny. All right, so it's the CPU fan cooler, and for that I chose the Corsair H100i GTX. It's going to cost around $110. This is a liquid cooled cooler, but the water comes pre-installed, so you don't have to worry about it messing up your system. And it's also pretty quiet, with only 30.7 dBA, so that's pretty quiet. And it also keeps your processor pretty cool, uh, 35 degrees celsius on idle and 45 degrees celsius on load, that's at least with my system, don't know about yours. And it also comes with a software called Corsair Link, which allows you to monitor the temperature and fan speed of your parts. It also allows you to change the color of the RGB lights. Alright, so next up we got the motherboard, and for that I chose the Gigabyte GA-Z97MX Gaming 5. Whew. That's a mouthful. Oh boy, you can tell that scripted crap. Alright, so anyways, this will set you back around $130, and for that you're really getting a really good motherboard. It has overclock support, and it has support for the socket type LGA1150, which is the socket type our CPU is on. It also has 6 SATA 6 ports and 1 SATA Express port, 4 USB 3.0 ports, and 4 USB 2.0 ports. This motherboard is also really good for upgradability because it has five, yeah, four RAM slots and has SLI and Crossfire support. Man, I messed up. <laughs> Speaking of four RAM slots, let's talk about what we're going to use them for. Wasn't that just really a good transition? But jokes aside, we have the Corsair Vengeance 16 gigabyte model. This has 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1600 megahertz. And it's also able to be overclocked, and it has an aluminum heat spreader to help dissipate heat, and it has an aggressive design! Oh, the sales. Alright, so for the graphics card, I chose the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 980 Ti Extreme Edition. Now, this is a beast of a graphics card, and you're going to be able to play games in 1440p with ultra to max settings, and get 60 plus FPS on every game you play. Or you can play games in 4K, with high to ultra settings and get an average of 60 fps on the games that you play it comes with 6 gigabytes of gddr5 memory clocked at 7200 megahertz and it also has two modes a gaming mode and an overclock mode in gaming mode the core is clocked at 1000 megahertz and boosted to 10,075 megahertz and in overclock mode the core is clocked at 1200 and 16 megahertz but can be boosted to 1317 megahertz this is overall a really good graphics card and it is shown by its specs and its performance it also has a really good cooling system and it has rgb illumination on the lights and the logo next up we have the storage and we actually did something different this time we went with one ssd and one hdg i have two reasons for that one is extra storage and the other reason is that you can put your operating system and a couple programs that you want to run really fast 
on the SSD and then the rest of your stuff on the HDD. So for the SSD or solid state drive, I went with the Crucial BX100. It has 250 gigabytes of storage, which is enough for your operating system and a few extra programs. It has SATA 6 transfer and a 535 megabytes per second read and a 370 megabytes per second write times. And then for the HDD, I went with the Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte. It has 2 terabytes of disk space, which is enough for anything you want, basically. It also has a read and write speed of 138 megabytes per second. Alright, next up we have the power supply, and for that I chose the Corsair CX 750 watt power supply. So CPU part picker said that this PC only needs 461 watts to power it, but I went with a 750 watt PSU just to make sure that it was enough to power the whole system. This is a semi-modular power supply, which means that you can take off some of the cables that aren't in use to clean up your PC. This is also 80 plus bronze certified, meaning that it's going to be taking up less energy. The last component to the build is the case, and for that I chose the Fractal Define S. It's a silent case, which means you won't be able to really hear your PC unless you really literally take your ear up to the case and listen. But it's an ATX mid tower case with enough room to hold all of our parts in this build. It comes with two fractal design dynamic GP14 fans, but it has enough room to put more fans in the front, on the top, and on the sides. It also has two USB 3.0 ports and an audio port and a audio port in the front. Overall, this is a really good case for upgradability and for silence and I would recommend this case. It also has like a window so you can see all your beautiful parts, so yeah. Alright, so that's going to conclude this video and if you liked the video, uh, leave a like. Tell me what you liked about the video in the description and if you disliked the video, tell me what you disliked about the video in the description because I would like to improve my skills and I can't improve unless I get feedback. So comment in the description what I can improve on.